Hello guys, Crispy here and welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing the GeForce RTX 3060 12 GB GPU in 2023. Finally, I hear you say I've been getting a lot of requests to cover the 3060 12 GB in the channel ever since it released back in 2021 in January. So it's a two-year-old GPU already. Kind of hard to believe that, you know, but it's still selling brand new and I bet it's in a lot of people's minds. This one is the AFOX model of the card. It looks absolutely beautiful with that white cooler on it. I really, really like it. I'm really curious to see if the cooler can actually cool those 170 watts of power without an issue. Now let's go over some of the 3060 specs. It has 3,584 CUDA cores, 12 gigabytes of that GDDR6 memory. I don't know why they put 12 gigabytes on the 3060 still like the 3060 ti 3070 and 3070 ti are much stronger gpus and they all have eight gigabytes and even the 3080 the first model of the 3080 has 10 gigabytes of vram it was a weird move by nvidia for sure it has a 192 bit memory buzz which curiously is the same as the 4070 ti's Hmm. <laughs> and a bandwidth of 360 gigabytes per second. And of course, it supports DirectX 12 Ultimate, DLSS, which is great, and ray tracing, which is there. I guess. <laughs> let's find out how it plays the most popular and demanding title, shall we? First up, let's go over the PC specs. We got the 3060 installed right here with the latest NVIDIA drivers available to it. You can see all of the GPU specs right here in Tech Power Up's GPU-Z. Resizable bar is enabled. And over on the left, we're pairing it with a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and 32 gigabytes of RAM, 3600 MHz CL14. First up, we got the super popular Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p resolution using DL and the high settings preset here with no ray tracing and it's getting right around 60 frames per second with a lot of stuttering issues but that's completely normal in this game it stutters even on my 4080 system so there's nothing you can do about it really but hey it's right around 60 fps at native resolution with the laa not even using dlss here that would bump up our fps by a lot of course and actually compared to taa the the DLSS quality looks a little bit better than native resolution in this game, just because it is super, super blurry. Yeah, this is dropping quite a bit from 60 FPS, but since it's a single player title, I would prefer to set things to high because it looks way better than medium. And uh, like th those visuals are super, super really great. Nice. You can't deny the game looks really nice on high settings, right? Oh, I hear some water. Oh yes, there it is. Let's go into it. Sometimes it drops a little bit near water. Not the case in this particular scenario right here, which is nice to see. All right, so I just teleported to this place. Now I'm gonna start counting the FPS again. Just wanna take a look at slightly different scenarios here in this one, you know. I'm also gonna go to Hogwarts in just a little bit. Uh, it seems like outside of that really dense forest area, it gets some more FPS, like 70 frames per second. Also, you can see a lot of fluctuation in the GPU usage department sometimes, but it's not a CPU bottleneck, just uh, how this game behaves with a lot of stuttering issues. Let's see a little bit of a fight right now. There we go. Huge troll right here. Z, come on. Let's do this. Oh, yes. 60-something frames per second. Not even dropping. Well, that was really fast as well. What the heck? I've been playing this game a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Hogwarts. This is more CPU bound than GPU bound, at least in this central hall right here. So, of course, FPS jump up by quite a bit, as you can see, around 90 frames per second on average. Uh, but then if you move out of the castle in this direction into like a patio area, it drops a lot into like what we've seen in the forest already. 60s, 70s, tons of stuttering issues in this area. It's one of the most stuttery ones, actually. Uh, but yeah, it's not even dropping from 60 FPS in this area, which is quite impressive. Next is Call of Duty Warzone 2 at 1080p using native resolution and the ultra settings with high textures here. <sighs> La Crespa is here again, my friends. I have not seen her in a really long time. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, I am seeing so many people dropping in this direction, Jesus. Oh, 
This, I'm not gonna last long. All right, here we go. Zarqua Hydroelectric. This is one of the most intensive areas in this game. For reference, in the warm-up, I was getting around like 90 frames per second. And here it is gonna drop from 60, I think. Especially near the water, which is the most intensive thing in this game. Let's go. Yep, 59. Well, 59 is actually quite good. <laughs> that means that pretty much everywhere in the map, you're gonna get 59 FPS or higher. That is pretty decent, you know. It's providing a really great experience, I would say, in Call of Duty Warzone 2. And this is with Ultra Settings preset. If you are willing to play at, like, low settings, you can even reach a high refresh rate experience, I guess, with 3060 here. Or at least 100 FPS or 120 on average, something like that. Uh, especially with DLSS. Let's keep on going, though. So far, so good. I am liking what I'm seeing. Of course, those 1% lows are pretty low. That's normal here in Warzone 2. This game stutters a lot or has a lot of micro stuttering issues, unfortunately. I've seen that happen with pretty much every GPU that I throw at it or every system that I throw at it. So nothing can be done against that. But the good thing is, if you don't really have the frame time enabled there, I wouldn't really be able to tell that the game was stuttering. So th there's that. Uh, it feels all right and it feels very, very playable indeed. Now, far away from water scenarios, we're getting up into the 90s again, as you can see. Very smooth frame rates indeed. And great even on a high refresh rate monitor. And here in a forest area or like an area with a bit more vegetation, it drops into the 60s but yeah for somebody looking into a 60 plus fps experience in warzone 2 at 1080p high settings or ultra settings um this is it now i'm gonna check it out with some dlss on quality with 69 percent sharpness the best sharpness there is uh this makes the game look a little bit sharper but you know it's not the best implementation of dlss that i've ever seen uh, in games still some people might actually enjoy the visuals a little bit more like this and it's enough to get us up into like the 90s and 100s at times even near the water as you can see here this is pretty impressive now and now instead of dropping into the 60s in this area it's only dropping into the 90s and high 90s as well that is way better actually now it's Elden Ringers. Oh, we got some motion blur. We're going to turn that off. <laughs> We're playing at 1080p maximum settings preset without motion blur. <laughs> Let's go. And this game is capped to 60 frames per second. There is a way to uncap it, but, you know, I, I won't really do that. We're going to guide ourselves to our GPU utilization here to see how much of that 3060 is being utilized. Uh, right now it's around 80%. So that means that we still have a good 15 to 20% GPU left. Uh, if you want to unlock the FPS, you should get higher frames. But you know, this is probably the best way to play this game, kept to 60 frames per second. It's the way uh, the developers intended you to play it, and some of the physics might actually break themselves and so on, just like in Fallout 4, for example, uh, if you do unlock the frame rate. So yeah, it's also a single player title, so no problems with 60 FPS locked all of the time. This is slightly more intense here you can see that GPU usage going up to 95% at times but it is still not dropping even in vegetation areas like this one uh, hello little flying dragon Ag Hill Ag Hill how's it going my friend oh my yeah <laughs> oh I forgot about the screams of my character he's like oh okay, no 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 oh boy Next is CSGO, my friends, and this... Oh, I actually got him. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Okay, uh, let's go over the settings first. And we're playing it at 4K using the low settings with high textures. And I tried it for a little bit at 1080p using 8x MSAA, and it was still CPU-bound using those settings. So, uh, yeah, we, we really gotta try it at 4K here with the 3060 so we can max uh, the GPU out in this game. Oh boy, there we go, there we go, let's do this. This is a buttery smooth experience, as expected. This is an old title, uh, but still a very popular one. It's the most popular game on Steam at the moment, with over 1 million players daily, uh, and it 
obviously runs quite well. And this game was a, a lot less intensive back in the days when it released. It has had a ton of updates, of course, so it's way more intensive now. But of course, for something like a GTX card, <laughs> like GTX 1650 or even 1050, it won't have a problem playing this still, even in 2023. Now, those 1% lows are quite low right there because of some stuttering issues that happen here uh, in, in the deathmatch servers. That's, yeah, like that, for example. It's really terrible, but it only happens in deathmatches anyways, and it's not like hardware related, uh, so it's, it's all right. It's just how the game runs. We're doing well here, but I am dying a lot. Ugh, middle of the board. That sucks, guys. Ugh. No, 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 no. Okay, there we go. There we go. There's a guy here. Oh, come on. Almost, almost a triple guys let's go nice now it's cyberbug 2077 1080p resolution using the high settings preset but i disabled fsr which comes on by default as well as the motion blur here over on the gameplay tab we're using medium crowd density and all right guys it seems to be a pretty decent experience here with above 60 fps pretty much uh, at all times maybe we're gonna check out one of the most intensive areas still here in the benchmark run as usual but i like what i'm seeing it's not dropping even into the 60s too much only to like 69 well now it's starting to drop more um but yeah it seems to be really stable as well look at those one percent lows pretty damn good and goodbye bob there we go that was a weird crash with weird physics but hey everything is very weird here in cyberbug city oh boy come on no, 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 don't get stuck. Don't that. What? Who are you? Bob got the bodyguard, guys. What the hell? <laughs> we gotta kill this guy. All right, where is Bob, by the way? I don't think we killed him. Also, FPS are not dropping around this roundabout, which is really, really good. Honestly, I thought this was gonna be a little bit slower in Cyberpunk 2077. Here we go. This street is usually super intensive as well. It's looking great so far. 67 right there. Wow. All right, so it didn't drop from 60 FPS at any point in the benchmark run. And again, we went through a couple of really intensive areas here. Yet it's still very stable. Wow. Dead Space Remake is next. This is super, super intensive. So we're actually utilizing DLSS at 1080p on quality. High settings preset. And you know what? It actually looks a little bit sharper uh, using DLSS than without it in this one. It's one of those soft games like Hogwarts Legacy. Seems like all of the new games are very, very soft. Anyway, I'm just going to go out here for a little bit. This is a pretty intensive area. All right. And it's still getting 80 something fps this is quite good it means that inside of the actual space station where most of the game is taking place in it will be at 60 plus all of the time there and you know what since it is already at 60 plus here we can say that it is a 60 plus fps experience 100 percent of the time in that space now this area is what you can expect in most of the game itself you know when you're shooting the aliens and stuff like that around 100 fps 90 80 maybe at times but uh, yeah it's it's quite good aside from those horrible stutters also over here i noticed that it drops a lot especially with the 3050 when i tested it here because of the glass i guess but not a problem for a 3060. Now it's Apex Legends with our boy Gibraltar right here. We're gonna play at 1080p using the highest settings aside from the spot shadow detail, which uh, it actually says you need more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM to use on insane. <laughs> and that is indeed very insane. Wow, this is impressive. Looking at the entire map is usually really intensive in this game and it's getting 120 frames per second. I also disabled the anti-aliasing here at 1080p because I like the little bit of a sharper look. It gets a bit soft at this resolution when you enable it. But yeah, you can expect like five less FPS if you do enable the AA. Let's start counting the FPS and it seems like it's gonna be a wonderful experience with the 3060 in Apex Legends. Even with all almost maxed out settings guys now looking at the city from here things drop a little bit into the 140s but it is still a high refresh rate experience for sure there's a guy over there i think yep there is a guy yeah you can still like spot people at the distance absolutely 
it's very, very seeable like this, and it looks great at the same time, or as great as it can look, basically. So far, I haven't seen a single stutter. It's extremely buttery smooth, guys. Oh boy, okay, maybe I should have used the triple take here, yeah? Oh, there's another Gibraltar right there. Hello, dear friend, how's it going? Uh, let's get out of here now. Oh, nope, nope, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, I just remembered that we haven't talked about the temperatures on this AFOX GPU. They're pretty amazing, as you can see, 60 degrees Celsius right there. Now, granted, it's really, really cold in my room. It's about like 15 degrees Celsius. During the summer, it will inevitably go up in temperature, but I am very impressed. It's doing a much better job than the aforementioned 6600 XT from AFOX that I have. But again, that was due to a manufacturing error on their part. Okay, this grass is slightly more intensive. And looking back, 120. So this is the perfect spot for us to throw down our ultimate. Let's do this. All right, let the explosions come. Here we go, my friends. There it is. Oh, yes. In the middle of the explosions, it drops into the 60s, basically. And it didn't drop from 60s. So this is a perfect experience in Apex Legends for 1080p. And now it's one of the most well-optimized titles of recent years. This is Forza Horizon 5. And we're playing it at 1080p using TAA, which is by far the best anti-aliasing method in this game, and the Extreme Settings preset. Ray tracing is set to high here, but it only works in Forza Vista. Um, if you want ray tracing in the game, you've got to increase it to Ultra or uh, Extreme, but it's not a good idea with the 3060, okay? <laughs> Maybe we should make a video testing only ray tracing with the 3060 and only ray tracing games so we can see what this GPU is capable of and actually we should probably do that for other GPUs as well here in the channel right let me know if you're interested in something like that all right let's see it inside of all of this vegetation right here boy okay all right it's not really dropping too much which is great VRAM is also not fully utilized here it's at 7.6 gigabytes at the moment uh, and I had some issues with like 8 gigabyte cards at 1080p extreme settings already if you play for a long period of time they will start giving you some warning messages saying that you're running out of VRAM um, but here with 3060 it has 12 gigabytes of it so there is no issues whatsoever even if it goes over 8 gigabytes of course all right this is where it's gonna start dropping a lot guys I think no it's not dropping a lot what? <laughs> so I really thought it would around here. This is great, guys. You can max out the game basically without the ray tracing, of course, and achieve smooth uh, FPS. A little bit of a stutter right there, by the way. This is the most intensive part. 65 FPS there on the minimum. Absolutely amazing, guys. This is just awesome here in Forza. Next is Battlefield 2042 and I didn't know but you can actually control your aim with the arrow keys in the keyboard. This is interesting but completely useless. Anyway, <laughs> we're playing it at 1080p using the high settings preset and no FSR or DLSS. This is native resolution although I actually usually prefer DLSS in this game to uh, the uh, normal uh, resolution, you know, native. But hey, we're here today. Oh, no, no! I thought I had the bazooka on me. Why don't I have the bazooka on me? That would have been perfect there. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see. A couple of guys right there. Oh boy, so many actually. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a random grenade now. Oh, it's so smooth, by the way. Once again, the 3060 is proving to be a really good 1080p GPU. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. If only I had the freaking bazooka, I forgot to attach it again. You know what? I'm gonna do it now. I don't know why I stopped counting the FP. All right, back to it. My team is not doing a good job whatsoever. We're losing very, very fast. <laughs> but okay, let's try to defend the uh, C1 site here. Oh boy. All right, now we can actually take this chopper out, maybe. Oh, that was so close, dude. Come on. Come on. All right, wait a second. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Good job, guys. Good job. Nice. One more. One more and it, it will be down. Come on, bro. It's so unfair that you need three freaking rocket shots to, to take down a chopper. All right, one down over here. There's a good, another one there. Okay. And 
Come on, come on, come on. Nice, nice. Triple kill. Finally doing something. Guys, we need more people here in C1. Otherwise, we're gonna lose it. Come on, people. Oh, boy, so many, so many. Throw a grenade there. All right. Oh, stay alive, stay alive, stay alive. No, we lost it already. Damn it. Let's go. Dropping a little bit around here, guys. 70s, as you can see. Still not a problem. In worst case scenarios, it only drops into the 70s. Now, it's one of the most beautiful titles, Red Dead Redemption 2, at the balanced settings, which means, like, some settings on high, ultra, medium, uh, mostly, like, high and ultra, actually, which is pretty interesting to see. Start counting the frames as well. You don't even need to utilize the LSS in this one. Actually, if you are playing games at 1080p resolution, you don't need DLSS, period, on the 3060, I guess. Uh, I'm, no, 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 I'm so sorry, Roach. I didn't mean to do this. Like, in every single game, you press F to, to enter vehicles and horses. In this one, it's E, and F actually punches him for some reason. <laughs> so sorry. I'm so sorry, Roach. So sorry. All right, you can quit complaining about... You don't fit there, are you serious? <sighs> anyway... <laughs> <laughs> it's all Bob's fault. We gotta find that bastard and kill him in this video, as usual, of course. <laughs> but let's talk about the FPS here. It is really impressive, as I was saying. I was expecting it to drop a little bit further from, like, 70 FPS. Sometimes it drops into the 60s, as you can see, and in some super intensive areas, it might even drop from 60 frames per second. But this, I would say it's a perfect experience for a single-player title. Dropping lower into the 60s right now, because I guess we're seeing some water on screen. Water is super intensive in this game. All right, Roche, let's go. Let's jump this. There we go. Very nice. Did we actually kill an animal? Oh my god, we killed a turtle! That was horrible. I'm so sorry. I'm a horrible person today. We punched a horse. We killed the turtle and we didn't even see Bob. It, he wasn't in his usual place, so I could not kill him. But at least it's not even dropping from 60 FPS even here with this water and uh, all of this vegetation around us. It looks awesome and it plays really well and it has zero stutters whatsoever. So it is really, really smooth, guys. Dying Light 2 is one of the few titles that actually looks better whenever you have DLSS enabled and you bump up that sharpness at the same time because it's quite soft at native resolution and uh, we're using the high quality settings here. DX11 as well, which is very stable in this one. What? Are you serious? 100 FPS? I was expecting way lower. Whoa, this is this is really good. Like the 3050, I think I tested it. Yeah, pretty sure I tested it in this game. And it performed so poorly at like 1080p low settings. Although it was on an earlier version of the game though. Um, but th this is... This is really good. And again, guys, that DLSS is at work here at 1080p res. Um, but... I prefer the look of the LSS, so even if it came without an FPS improvement, I would enable the LSS anyways. The game is very soft right now, but that's only because of uh, the rain. Rainy weather looks terrible right here in this game. I, I don't know why they put these lint flares looking things, you know, droplets of water in your face. It's, it just looks really bad in my opinion. Uh, but anyways, you gotta live with that. I guess it's more realistic maybe if you're using goggles or something. <laughs> this is a buttery smooth experience. Look at the 1% lows. 95 FPS 1% lows. I'm also very glad to see that they fixed pretty much all of the stuttering issues that this game suffered from because back when it released it had a ton of stuttering and now it is so smooth see th these are some developers that care about stuff they even um, fixed an issue with Kepler GPUs after I made a GTX 670 video in this game where the lighting was all messed up for 600 and 700 series GPUs from Nvidia very very good to see and this game performs absolutely amazing on the 3060 Let's go! Oh! Now it's the try-hard people's game, you know, <laughs> Valorant. So we're playing this one at 1080p using the high settings with 4 times MSAA. And this is still GPU bound most of the time at least, as you can see, 90 plus percent GPU usage basically all of the time. Sometimes it drops into like the 80% range, but uh, it is very, very smooth indeed. Can I open this? Is this like the... the, the I, I, uh, I don't... 
What? How? No? Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure how well I'm gonna do in this one because it, it, people are just really good in Valorant. Very, very sweaty. Look at this. I just, I don't know what to do. It's very irritating to me to play Valorant these days because in every single deathmatch that I join, people are just sweating bullets. You know, or I am sweating bullets because they uh, they shoot me so much. 500 frames per second is absolutely insane, guys. It's super buttery smooth all of the time. If you have a strong CPU to go with the uh, 3060, you can play this game competitively all day long, even on high settings. You know, you're probably going to switch to low and get even higher frames per second. Um, but yeah, if you want high, it is still going to be insanely good. Jesus Christ, we're, we're dying so much. What, what are you camping there? Oh my goodness, dude. You gotta be so careful about every single angle in this one. I don't like this game. <laughs> it's too, too much. It's too hard, guys. It's, that's what she said. Uh, come on. There we go. Random headshot. The randomest ever. Next is Fortnite Battle Royale at 1080p using DirectX 12 using the high settings, 100% resolution scale. But I did disable the Nanite virtualized geometry, which enables the Lumen stuff over here, which is actually ray tracing and that just wrecks FPS completely. So I suggest you to do the same if you're running a 3060 or pretty much every other GPU out there because it's it's just not worth the performance penalty, you know? All right, we just dropped and we are already seeing a couple of stutters here and there. It's completely normal in Fortnite or Stutter Night, whatever you want to call it. I really like uh, to call it Stutter Night. I think it's quite fitting, you know? <laughs> yeah, right now it's not too bad though. Yeah, not gonna lie. I could definitely enjoy my time here in this game if I like this type of gameplay, you know? I don't really like Fortnite night too much these days but uh, without the building stuff it's actually kind of enjoyable sometimes that lighting on the high settings also looks really impressive even without the ray tracing or the lumen stuff enabled it's really good looking isn't it and oh we're glowing as well that is absolutely fantastic i like it oh, there's one right there that is definitely a bot the way he's moving look at that yep <laughs> okay people look at me i want some action come on oh boy there we go a little jump right there also in this area with a lot of snow things are way less intensive because we got no vegetation and it can go up to like 200 fps at times which is kind of crazy let's go <laughs> it just left oh boy oh boy no 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 all right wait 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 we can do this we can do this oh my god oh my god uh stop with a freaking hammer dude what the hell wait, wait, wait. come on oh hello there kratos how's it going beautiful beard today let's go this is God of War at 1080p using no upscalers and the high settings preset, which is better than the original settings from the PS4 Pro or whatever it is, PS4 as well. Um, let's start counting the frames. This is pretty damn smooth, my friends. We're going to see a really intensive cutscene in this one with tons of depth of field effects, which drops the FPS by a lot usually. But yeah, it shouldn't drop from 60 frames per second, and that's exactly exactly what you want in a story-driven title like this one. Uh, on ultra settings, it might actually drop here and there in more intensive scenarios. We're near the cutscene already. Yeah, this is it. All right, take a look at that frame rate, guys. 70s. Oh my god, it's not even dropping from 70 frames per second. <laughs> wow, that's really impressive. Okay, now is the most intensive part, I think. 76. This is... I, again, it's perfect for this game at 1080p high settings, the 3060, you know? It's interesting to see that the CPU usage sometimes goes up to 100%. I'm not sure if you guys are noticing it, but I'm catching that in the corner of my eye sometimes. There are three digits there. Yeah, look at that, 100% CPU usage there again. And now we got a little bit of a fight. Come on, Axel, <laughs> there we go. Uh, which won't really drop our FPS by any, basically. As you can see, it's still getting 90 frames per second. There are some effects here still, but, uh, well, I guess they're not really that intensive, right? 
Spider-Man Miles Morales is next at 1080p using TAA, so no upscalers and the very high settings preset. Oh my goodness, are you serious? 100 plus FPS is what we can expect with the 3060 here. That is actually crazy. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> what the hell, bro? This looks really good. It's very high settings preset. It's actually the highest settings preset in this game. You can still manually increase a couple of settings and make it look slightly prettier. Now this right here is where the FPS tend to drop a bit more and it already dropped into like the 80s. But not from that. Also, take a look at that VRAM utilization. It's at 8 gigabytes right now. So some 8 gigabyte GPUs might actually struggle a little bit and start stuttering slightly more uh, because, well, they just run out of VRAM after a while. Gotta mention that I've seen a couple of stutters already, but um, overall it's pretty smooth, honestly, and very stable, as you can see. For me to be moving this quickly through the city and loading in things this fast, uh, the frame time is pretty damn smooth there and flat. Not bad whatsoever. This area right here is also slightly intensive because of the smoke effects dropping into the 80s again. All right, this is awesome. Next is GTA 5 at 1080p resolution, four times MSAA anti-aliasing, or MS anti-aliasing, and very high settings slash ultra settings. The only thing that's not maxed out is post effects, which is on normal uh, instead of ultra because normal actually doesn't introduce any motion blur. And over here, everything is turned off. These are really, really intensive settings. But hey, 3060 has no issues with GTA 5 1. Whatsoever. To be expected, because again, it's an old title, but yeah, you can have a high refresh rate experience in this one while making the game look really, really good and very smooth edges as well, by the way. This implementation of anti-aliasing is awesome, MSAA, it's a shame that they don't include it in newer titles, they only do like TAA stuff, which looks kind of smudgy, uh, but no, this is very, very crispy indeed, and I love it, obviously. <laughs> there is a problem, by the way, in some less intensive areas, you might see a ton of stuttering issues if you have a really good CPU like this one, because when the FPS reached like 180-ish frames per second, or even 170 plus, it starts stuttering. It's just an engine limitation in this game, um, and you should probably lock the frames to like 120 or so for the best experience. Oh, all right, there we go. It's all good. It's all good. How did blood get to the back of my car? I don't understand. Anyway, so um, grassy areas are the most intensive areas in this game, and you can see it drop into the 60s, guys. It might even drop from 60 in those bushes uh, near Bob, you know. Hello, Jack. How's it going, my friend? All good? Ah, he's here. Very nice. He also likes the, the 3060, for sure. It, it runs everything very, very smoothly indeed. Now, over here... These are the bushes that I was telling you about. Not dropping though. So, okay, it's it's good for 60 plus 100% of the time. Goodbye, Bob. And lastly, we got Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p, 100% resolution scale, using the very high settings preset with motion blur disabled. Here we go, start counting our FPS. And yes, I am running the built-in benchmark in this one, just because it provides a really good representation of what to expect inside of the game itself when you're playing it. So you can expect around like 80 to 90 frames most of the time with some drops here and there yeah but it will never drop from 60 frames per second once again the 3060 is very impressive in yet another triple a single player title and it's great to see because this is actually a game that runs better usually on amd gpus and it is conclusion time my friends the rtx 3060 12 gigabyte model is definitely a great 1080p gpu you can play pretty much everything with it at high settings, 1080p, 60fps or more. By the way, this AFOX model was really impressive, those temperatures were absolutely fantastic, never reached like 70 degrees Celsius, it was actually far from it, right? Uh, the maximum that it reached was around like 65 degrees, so I can definitely recommend this AFOX model right here, and it's also looking beautiful. I, I really like the aesthetics on it, honestly. If the PCB was white, that would be like top-notch, but you know, it still looks really, really good like this.
this. Now, in terms of value, I've checked a few stores in the EU as well as Newegg in the US, and it seems to be selling for around like 360 to 380 euros slash dollars. So um, for a 36, a two-year-old product that was supposed to cost 330 dollars MSRP, yeah, that's not good value whatsoever. Like, what the heck? <laughs> so if you are willing to buy one of these for those prices, I think you should save a little bit more and grab the 3060 Ti. Also, if you're willing to go to the AMD side of things, there's the RX 6600 XT, which is very similar in performance to the 3060, 12 gigabyte. Uh, yeah, it does have less VRAM. It also doesn't have DLSS support, so you lose there, but you also save like a hundred bucks compared to this. So it's better value. And lastly, if you are buying a 3060 12 gigabyte used, I would pay around like 200 to 250 euros for it. I think that's a reasonable price to pay for a really great 1080p gaming experience on this card. And that's been it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed the video, of course. And I'll hopefully catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all. Bye-bye.